Okay, hi there. Welcome to a macro video. Uh, economics assessment questions often ask students to analyse and evaluate the potential gains from trade. And a key idea that you might want to include in your answers is that of dynamic gains from trade. And uh, we'll explore this idea in this short revision video. So what do we mean by dynamic gains from trade? Well, essentially, dynamic gains means that uh, opening up a country to trade in goods and services might help make a domestic economy more productive and therefore more competitive as a result. So dynamic gains from trade are defined as those benefits of trade which help to accelerate economic growth of participating countries. Now, these gains from trade are not automatic and not inevitable. Um, and the benefits of gains from trade are rarely evenly spread. But here are four examples, perhaps, of some of the dynamic effects of trade, open trade, open borders between countries. One is the idea of knowledge diffusion. This is the idea that uh, businesses and countries can transfer ideas and know-how across national borders. As countries uh, specialise in different goods and services, uh, there can be a kind of an improvement in a country's capabilities, in particular via deeper specialisation, uh, specialising in the things in which they have a, an emerging uh, advantage. A second dynamic gain is the idea of learning economies of scale. Well, there's physical economies of scale, in the sense that businesses can ramp up investment and increase their productive capacity, but uh, you learn from doing and uh, you learn from trial and error and uh, trade encourages best practice across borders. Oftentimes companies might uh, gauge themselves against their, one of their international rivals and try to improve what they do. Trade also opens up markets. It makes markets and industries more contestable, more competitive. And that increased day-to-day -day competition between suppliers can and often does drive different levels of product differentiation as businesses try to define themselves in terms of what they can offer customers. And also, of course, it increases the amount of choice uh, that consumers have in markets. And crucially, uh, another aspect of this increased contestability is that trade incentivizes local producers to improve their productivity, which then increases long run aggregate supply. So these are some of the dynamic gains from trade in terms of transfer of ideas and know-how, in terms of consumer choice, and in terms of hopefully more research, more productivity, more innovation. South Korea, I think, is a really good example of a country that has achieved, well now, high income advanced country status, uh, largely on the back of being deeply integrated into the world economy. Now, one of a cluster of countries, mainly but not exclusively in Far East Asia, known as Dynamic Globalisers. And in 2019, South Korea was the number 12 economy in the world in terms of GDP. It's the sixth biggest exporter in the world economy and the fifth most complex country, according to the Economic Complexity Index, the ECI, from which this table of data, this amazing table, is, uh, this patchwork quilt of data is generated. The large number of separate panels here reflects the diversity of interrelated industries where South Korea has both capabilities and capacities. In uh, 2019, Vietnam was developing similar patterns here. So they're number, the, I think they're the 44th biggest country in the world now in terms of GDP, but they're the 20th biggest exporter in the world and increasingly becoming more complex over time. So they're building competitive, scaled capabilities and advantage in industries such as manufacturing and assembly of broadcasting equipment and textiles, for example, perhaps helped by an inflow of foreign direct investment. And other countries, you can download any data you want from the Observatory of Economic Complexity, OEC. Another good example here is Morocco just uh, broken into the top 60 countries in the world in terms of size of GDP and almost now the top uh, top 50 for exports. Uh, again, they have a less complex export pattern, but they, they have a car sector 
Uh, they have a textile sector. They have a, obviously a, a farming sector as well. Insulated wire accounts for over 10% of their exports. Bulk of their exports, of course, goes to the European Union. Morocco is really interesting. Uh, I've just picked out a couple of tweets from James Hall, Reuters Africa correspondent. Uh, one which wasn't picked up in the previous table is the fact that Morocco is now one of the world's biggest generators of renewable energy, for example, from solar and wind power. A remarkable investment. And of course, they may well become a net exporter of renewable energy uh, to southern Europe. And just recently, in fact, just a couple of days ago, Morocco has now become the world's number three exporter of mandarin oranges behind Turkey and China, over half a million tonnes annually. Um, so again, countries building up capability and capacity. That is really the essence of, of how you achieve competitiveness in trade. But uh, I think this, this breadth and range of industries that Morocco is developing now, in addition to things like tourism, you know, is a good example of some of the dynamic gains from trade. OK, well, thank you for joining me on this short video.